We are live. Thanks, director. Yeah. Director's a strong word, but... Who's directing <laughs> who? I have no idea who's directing who. Join us. Join us. Come in. What do you think, puppy? Huh? So, yes, we're in Brendan's. We got Commodore Richard. Perry watching. Commodore. Dude, what's that guy's first name? I think it's Commodore. No, it's not. No? No. I don't know. It's some geeky name. Dorky name. It's yeah. It goes by Commodore. Is it like... He's a rat guy, though. Terrence or... Or Claude... I don't know if Commodore is listening. We should have him do a segment on growing. Yeah. He's been growing his own. Mm -hmm. It's a, I mean, it's a burgeoning market in Michigan now. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, you can grow it in Michigan. I think we're talking about a different it. I think that's the the joke I was making. Oh. Yeah. And yes. I, I know a few folks who are looking at getting into. Growing the herbs, yeah. So, well, we're gonna get started here in a few minutes. Yeah, uh, I just want to let some folks uh, get connected to the live stream. Join if need be. Yeah, like I said, this is gonna be loaded on YouTube. The perspective is gonna be a little bit different because I've got a camera recording and then I've got a uh, my phone streaming. Hey, Laura, what are you doing? Whatever oh. she wants to do. What are you munching on, huh? I wish I could interact with you, Commodore. Brendan's going to have to have to uh, navigate yeah. your messages with He me. still hasn't sent any messages in response to us insulting him, so... Maybe he's trying to sleep and he's, he just put it on to fall asleep, too. I wish I could be that for you. <laughs> so, yeah, tell us what we're going to be doing today, just a little preview. Uh, we're going to be talking about tobacco blending and um, the COVID pandemic uh, kind of prevented us from doing that this year in a live group. I hate that with the fact that we have to call it a live group. Right, yeah. Or, or whatever we call it. Um but I figured I would let people look at um, the creation of one blend that's fairly established, at least in our pipe community, which is uh, um, the 2018 club blend called The Doctor. Mm -hmm. There was a bit of a miscommunication in the post. I uh, understood that we were going to be blending East Virginia today. However, um, we are not. Uh, I will be flogged uh, and tarred and feathered for my insolence, so rest assured. And Keith Gill has joined us today. Hey, Keith. So, I guess, you know, we're just uh, we're waiting for a few more folks to join, and we'll get the blending started. Blending. Um, yeah. It's very different when you're blending, like, 10 pounds. Yeah. Or I can't imagine, like, you know, 100 pounds or whatever that right. big companies do. Yeah, when uh, Eric and I were... This is Brendan, by the way. Well, I'm streaming, so that's kind of obvious. But uh, the uh, Eric and I, we went down to the Missouri Meerschaum factory for their 150th anniversary. And the uh, illustrious Jeremy Reeves was there. He did something similar to this. Uh, I don't recall which one he made, but... It was Briar Fox. It was Briar Fox, okay. Um, he, kinda, he had some tobaccos and some toppings that, that they used, and he just demonstrated it that for everybody right there in front of the factory and it was it was a really good time really interesting to see how some of the blending masters do their work uh, and Jeremy Reeves certainly is a, a blending master so yeah don't let this go to your head this in no way is going to be a you're now a master blender <laughs> so neither am I but um hopefully I can kind of throw some really interesting ideas and uh Kind of get to the basic nuts and bolts of what 
blending should do and and yeah. often what it really does do, which is make a terrible blend. Yeah, it's definitely really hit or miss. You can end up uh, making something really good accidentally, or you can end up uh, putting a lot of effort into something and it turns out to be garbage. Uh, yeah, don't ever try to use real peanut butter in blending. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. <laughs> Actually, I use the peanut butter oil. Um, the oil from the, the separated oil from yeah, the. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was thinking it would go well with the nuttiness from the burlies. And it just kind of created this oily. You know, yeah. Uh, did, it, did it ghost a pipe? Uh, I only got through like a half a pipe and I'm like, I can't do this ever again. <laughs> And then I waited like three years with it to see if it would like get yeah. better. Oh, well now that Josh Holbert has uh, joined the party there, I think uh, I think we can maybe get started. But well, before, so, uh, Josh? you know, before you started, just explain to everybody again what we're doing today and uh, we will um, get started. All right. So I am Eric from the Furniture City Pipe Society and uh, today we're going to be talking about some basic blend, homemade blending that you can do if you have some tobaccos that you would like to you know make a new blend yourself um, every year our club does a blending competition and we submit our blends and then at the beginning of um, the year after the, the winner is announced then that blend is made for the club and it's considered our club blend and I don't say this lightly when I would I say every blend that we've made um, for every year has been a blend that I would sell in a store, in a, in a, in a pipe shop. So uh, the one that we're going to make today is from 2018, and it was created by Scott Busby, who was our president for a, a period of time. Um, Scott made a blend called The Doctor, and The Doctor is a Virginia Perique. Um, with some other little interesting weird things in it, but I hope that it'll show you um, how blending works and kind of what the goal is. Um, so let's let's start. First of all, with blending, you want to make a blend that you want to smoke. Um, in our competition, a lot of people try to make a mild aromatic blend because they know that that's going to get the most votes. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, you're blending for yourself. So you have to know what you like. And so smoke a lot of different uh, tobaccos. Um, today, we're using um, a Jalapa Nicaraguan cigar leaf blend. Smoke it straight in a pipe. Figure out what it does, what it adds, what it contributes. Um, same with your Virginias and your Burleys and your, all your different Oriental varietals. All of those things are going to um, drastically change the way your blend um, interacts with, with both the taste and the, your mouth and, um, and uh, the other tobaccos. Uh, the one thing people don't realize is that when you take two tobaccos and put them together, you are creating three flavors. You're creating the, the, t the flavor of the first tobacco, which might be very complex you are adding the second flavor of the second tobacco, which might be very complex, and then when you put them together, you are adding a, a connection of both of those. And so you have two complex things, even if they're single varietal leaf, and you put them together, and all of a sudden you have a whole kind of plethora of, of flavors. And so I usually talk about keeping it simple, which I'm actually really bad at. Um, we want to impress people, and so we put a bunch together. Um, it's like with food. If you make food and you put a bunch of uh, ingredients together, um, typically you'll keep on adding ingredients until you add one that kind of ruins the whole thing. Uh, is that... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's that. All right, so with the doctor... Um, the thing that, so Virginia Periques is what the doctor is, and that is um, a Virginia, and it's combined with Perique. And the doctor has um, bright Virginia and red Virginia. So bright Virginias are 
um, your, they're your typical uh, grassy hay. Um, they offer a lot of uh, sugar, and so they tend to smoke a little hotter, but they add that sweetness. Um, and, oops, that's Izmir. Um, and then the second one we're going to add is uh, Red Virginia, and Red actually has more sugar, it's more caramely, it's kind of nutty, um, a lot of people like it. Uh, McClellan used Red to make, kind of use that fermented process to make those really vinegary, um, kind of traditional McClellan blends. Um, now what we did here is we actually stove these Virginias, so all of these tobaccos are from Daughters and Ryan, and uh, they offer, a, it's called a blender's bench. They're tobaccos that are just base tobaccos. They have um, nothing added except for like um, a humectant, which kind of keeps them from molding. Um, or an antimicrobial, I think that's what you would call it. Yeah. So uh, um, in this blend, we have 22% Red Virginia and 8% bright Virginia, and so that's going to give you 30% uh, Virginias, and when I open this up, oh, that startled, uh, startled the puppy. That's only, by the way, that sound only came from, what is it, two months of sitting in this jar, Yeah. because I also stoved it in here. Now, stoving is a process where you kind of force age the tobacco. And, on a, and what it does is it heats it up and it kind of continues that fermentation process. So it kind of takes away the sharp edges and it allows um, the tobaccos to kind of uh, marry and to, it's almost like caramelizing an onion. Um, so when you smell this, it's got uh, these really sugary notes to it. If you want to smell it, Brendan. I'd love to smell it. Mmm, yeah, oh yeah, caramel and sugar and kind of a brown sugar, almost yep. molasses y yep. smell, almost like blackstrap molasses. And that's going to form our basis. And there is no molasses in this, um, it's just those sugars. And when you add the heat to it, which we did this at 250 degrees in a sealed mason jar for, oh, I forget now, um, for one hour. So not too long, um, but kind of a higher level, kind of like roasting. Um, vegetables or nuts or any sort of thing like that. So all of these tobaccos are ribbon cut. If you have any uh, stories of blending and you wanted to add that to the comments below, go for it. Uh, can I have like a spoon or something? Yeah. I like to blend my tobaccos super dry because we're going to be adding some liquid to it and um, it'll allow the tobaccos to kind of absorb that liquid quicker. Alright. Definitely need to invent smell-o-vision because uh, yeah. this is good, should be good stuff. Alright, so the next tobacco we're going to add is our Cyprian Latakia. And I actually went back and asked Scott about the recipe to this one, and he said that there was 22% Latakia in it, and it blew my mind. A lot of people yeah. think Latakia is a very strong blend, overpowering, aggressive, um, and it is aggressive, and it's very smoky and, and woodsy, but it's also very mild in nicotine, um, and mm -hmm. so... Um, if you add it right to tobaccos, it will actually, um, it will not be as strong as the initial smell. Mm -hmm. So, I love me some Latakia. Our pipe club is actually doing a 12 year aged, uh, 12 year aging Latakia experiment. Um, and we're asking the question, um, is Cyprian Latakia, uh, does it age the same way Syrian Latakia does? Or... Maybe said differently, can you reach a point with Cyprian Latakia where it has very similar notes to Syrian? Um, yeah, so the, the basic difference there is the, the Syrian Latakia is much more 
floral and much more uh, bright and it's often crudely described as less harsh than Cyprian Latakia. And our basic hypothesis is that that might be due to the fact that Syrian Latakia hasn't been made in, what, 20 years? Something like that, but just because more. of various yeah. geopolitical issues in Syria. Uh, and that's so all the Syrian Latakia on the, the, that most of us have experienced by now, um, unless you're you know, an, an old timer, it has a lot of age on it. So we're, we're trying to test the hypothesis that uh, it's the age, not necessarily the fact that it comes from the Syrian growers that gives it that. We might be wrong, but that's what an experiment's for. Yep. Now already we have Virginia's and we have Latakia. There are a ton of blends that are Virginia Latakia blends. Um, the one I think always when I think of these these blends are uh, Leo by Lane, which they discontinued that a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, John Lewitsky from Arrowhead Pipe Club and, and from ours mm -hmm. um, was an avid smoker of Leo. Um, so already we have uh, three tobaccos in this, which means, I don't know, what's the math on that? How many permute or calculations um, <sighs> of all of the different flavors that we've created with three? Oh, the humanities guy. Nine? Yeah, something like that. So it would be three, three to the third, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or, or three, three times three. I don't know. If you're a math guy, uh, go ahead and put that in the comments. Because, uh, again, I was a theology nerd, not a... Not a math guy. Another thing you want to consider uh, with these is um, volume. I'm doing this based on percentages. Um, I could tell you what my what my gram weight is or my ounce weight, but I like to do it by percentages. That way, when I change the the, the volume, it's going to um, be easier to calculate when I want to put it into ounces or grams or that sort of thing. Also, you have to consider um, weight. Sometimes, if you're adding a already pre-made tobacco and it's got a lot of water weight to it that obviously is going to go a lot farther um, it's going to you don't have to add as much to get the same effect um, <laughs> sometimes with uh, you know if they're all ribbon cut tobaccos they're all going to kind of burn that same way um, but sometimes um, companies will make like granulated perique versus ribbon cut perique where granulated is a lot smaller and so you're getting a lot more surface area on that tobacco which means you can add less to get more of a result on that um, mm -hmm. for, so all those things that you need to have in, in mind uh, all right so next one is we are adding my favorite and this is paulina perique it's perique um, you don't have to be I'm, i make this complicated But it's, it's a certain type of Perique. Um, Perique is a blend, and it's a blend that's made in St. James Parish, Louisiana. And it's a blend of a bunch of different tobaccos. Um, but a couple of years ago, the four farmers from the four growing regions of St. James Parish um, kind of kept their blends aside. Are we good? Now we are. Just, okay. just decided to stop recording this stupid piece of crap. Um, and uh, each of those different farms kept their barrels separate, and then they were offered to the to the pipe community. Um, um, so this is Paulina Perique. People say that it's um, Perique traditionally is um, black pepper, uh, rum, fig, raisin. It's fruity. It's fermented, it's spicy, and um, a lot of people, like I particularly, absolutely love it. It's in a lot of blends. It's only made in, by two different farmers, and basically one farmer, Mark Ryan. And um, a little goes a long way because unlike Latakia, Perique is very high in nicotine. Uh, this blend has 18% Perique. And that is about that that 80-20 Virginia Perique is often where a lot of uh, Virginia Periques reside. Often less Perique. Um, so 18% is a lot of Perique. This one has a kind of a peppery sourness smell. It's got like this flintiness. 
mm, um, yeah. that's like almost like charcoal or cocoa or there's like yeah. a coffee note to it. Coffee, cocoa, almost a little, a little bit of a grass hay in there too. Mm. Yeah. And Farid does start out as a burly and then it goes through a process for 16 to 18 months um, where it uh, ferments in oak barrels. So, under pressure. Under pressure. Lots of pressure. Yeah. Like like David Bowie. And Freddie Mercury. Oh, I was just going to say Yeah. yeah. So, now we have a total of four tobaccos in our blend. Um, we're going to have a lot of sugar. We're going to have a lot of smokiness. We're going to have a lot of fruity pepperiness. And we continue. Mm -hmm. um, next, we're going to add Izmir. Izmir is a type of oriental Turkish leaf, and you don't have to remember any of this, but but it, Turkish often adds a kind of a sourness, um, a, a creaminess, uh, depending on the varietal. Um, Izmir is a really well-known one. Um, in this blend here, that we have 15%, um, and Izmir adds like a nutty butteriness and so we're going to ramp up this tobacco's um, um, kind of nuttiness. We don't have a whole lot of burly in this so this one will really help give us some body um, without making it a lot stronger. If you have any questions about Izmir or Oriental Leaf or any of this, um, I'm trying not to go for six hours. So let's see, we have, we have like a spicy, salty, buttery, fruity, smoky, sweet already. And we continue. Right. Next, we are adding Cigar Leaf. Now, Cigar Leaf is like the wild card uh, in pipe tobaccos because that hasn't been very long where it really wasn't used a whole lot. Yeah. It's kind of a recent fad. Yeah. Fad can be a negative word. Just a recent a surge in interest is probably a better way to put that. Yep. And even in a pipe, even mild cigar leaf is a lot stronger than if you were to smoke it in a cigar. Do you? I do you definitely. Experience? Something about the being in the chamber like that. There's a lot more heat involved in a pipe chamber than yep. a cigar. So it definitely changes the flavor profile quite a bit. I mean, you could add five, maybe ten percent to a to a blend and totally change a blend. Yeah. So in a good way, it's a great ingredient. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever added more than fifteen percent cigar leaf to a blend, even when I want to go really strong. Um, so a little goes a long way. Um, cigar leaf primarily offers um, that kind of punchy mustiness that sometimes gives body. Often it helps, it helps um, bring tobaccos together by giving you something that's like up front and out there and a little bit more bold. Um, so I'm gonna add that. Did I say how much is in there? Cigar Leaf is 15% uh, in this blend. Um, now, thinking about this blend, we've got uh, Bright and Red Virginias, which are kind of on the mild side. Latakia, which is on the mild side, Perique, which is strong, Cigar Leaf, which is strong, Izmir, or Oriental, which is very mild. So we're looking at a medium strength blend here, maybe approaching a little bit stronger. And you've got to be aware of that because um, you might be wanting to create a blend that's an all day blend, so you don't want it very strong. You might want a, a blend that's going to knock your socks off with nicotine, and uh, that's easily doable. Um, so, just depending on what, what you're trying to do. Um, now, the great thing about blending yourself is that you can do whatever you, whatever you want. You can add, the sky's the limit. And uh, this blend particularly has two kind of wild card um, components. The first one is French tarragon. There are a ton of herbs that are smokable in a pipe, and tarragon is one of those herbs that has been smoked for, I don't know how many, hundreds and thousands of years, I don't know, I don't, yeah. but um, 
Paragon offers, um, the smell on this is, mm -hmm. uh, it's Tarragon. Yeah, there's, it's a very it's unique and particular smell. Explain, what do you think, Brendan? Um, Tarragon is like, it's, it, when you smoke it, it produces almost like a vanilla, um, yeah, it's a mild, like, like culinarily, when, when I cook with it, I cook with it a lot, um, it's a mild sweetness that it adds yeah. to it, a, a, kind of a creamy vanilla-ness to it, but it's still got this, like, herbal quality that's herbal, almost licorice, yeah. maybe, um, I don't know, it, it's one of my favorite herbs to cook with, especially to put, like, on, like, a creamy chicken blend, um, Creamy chicken blend. I think that's the name of my next blend. It's creamy chicken. Um, but yeah, it, it's um, it's definitely not something you you see a lot in pipe tobacco. But yeah, it's it adds just this wonderful undertone of herb. Um, deer tongue is a very common herb, which has got like a vanilla flavoring. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add. I'm going to add some right now, and then I'm going to mix it up, and then I'm going to add it, because there's actually no, like, there's no recipe for this. Um, when I originally asked Scott how much, he's like, oh, just put a little in. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, because I'm like, I want to be really specific about these things. Um, also, if you are looking at this, the tobaccos, can you see it? Here, I'll... Bring it closer to the camera here. The tobaccos are look beautiful. Oh yeah. And presentation goes a long way, just like in food. Mm -hmm. And so this one has got that vibrant green from the tarragon, um, but it also has some really dark leaf uh, and some really light leaf. And uh, now what I'm going to do is because it's still a little dry, I'm just going to very very lightly fold it. Is that what it's called in cooking? Yeah. Yeah, because you don't want to get in there, because it's so dry, you don't want to get in there and mash it. Yeah. Uh, but folding it together will allow it to integrate without messing it up. And some of these tobaccos, too, tend to stick together. Yeah. So this, with you, there's really, really no other way to do it but with your hands. Uh, pulling the tobacco apart just slightly um, and then just folding it together is it's going to make it so you're not don't suddenly get a whole bowl of Perique. Yep, yep. The two, um, with tobacco, you have what it smells like, and then you also have what it tastes like. And those two things can be really crazy different. Yeah. Um, particularly with aromatics, where you have a lot of people that go, wow, that really smells like uh, cinnamon toast crunch with uh, uh, a burnt marshmallow or something. But then you smoke it, and it smokes like hot air, or it smokes, it tastes more like caramel, mm. um, or it just, it hurts, it burns you. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to be aware of this, um, because what, what, there's a lot of uh, science involved in how tobaccos smoke, how they taste, and how they smell. Um, and those two things that kind of help regulate the tobaccos are, they're called casings and toppings. Um, casings are ingredients that you add to either regulate the pH level of the tobacco or it's, um, it's you're adding um, a casing to um, raise the sugar level. So you're not going to so much taste it as you're going to feel it. Um, and pipe smoking is a really big kind of feeling experience. And so because of that, um, I think casings are actually um, more important than toppings because if you have a really good casing, um, you're already going to have a better tobacco. So, for example, a very common one, um, other than propylene glycol, which is um, used in a lot of aromatics, is um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, casing. Oh, uh, apple cider vinegar. Mm -hmm. um, this, this apple cider vinegar works with the tobacco on like a microbial level and it actually like helps marry the tobaccos, take away the sharp edges. And so, and, and we're talking like a, 
quarter of a teaspoon in a pound, mm. or an eighth of a teaspoon, something really minor. Um, anything else on that? Um, I, I would also mention too, you know, there's a, a lot of non-aromatic smokers like to say that tobacco is doesn't have additives, or yeah. yes. is, and, and it's true that pipe tobacco doesn't have the same additives that cigarettes do, but every tobacco you've ever smoked, I, I, I venture to say, unless you're some weirdo that went out and like grabbed it right out of the farm and took the leaf and broke it apart, has had some sort of casing or, or uh, added to it. Because yes. otherwise it'd be actually quite gross. The, the pH would be off, it would be really acidic, or it would be really basic. It, it would just, it would be wholly unpleasant. So uh, the myth that, you know, uh, pipe tobacco has no additives, or at least you know, non-aromatics do, is it's, it's not true, and it's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's, they're not, yeah. the, like you said, the additives are very often just like apple cider vinegar, uh, or often they use al different kinds of alcohol. Alcohol, yeah. Um, these aren't, you know, arsenic and fire retardant. Yeah. So that's... Oh, there might be a fire retardant in some. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, companies want to keep their tobaccos wet, so, so you pay for water weight. So they're gonna they're gonna add something to it that it's like a burn accelerant to like mm -hmm. keep your tobacco going even though it's so wet and that's why a lot of your pipes when you smoke an aromatic will give you like a wet pipe when you're done finishing. Now this is not something you you should like stick your nose up at and shy away from, but just be aware of it because mm -hmm. um, most of these things are food grade ingredients and companies aren't gonna. You're not going to do something out of your out of your best interest. Yeah. Um, well, it's also worth noting too that the pipe tobacco, premium pipe tobacco industry is not is an entirely different animal than the uh, uh, cigarette tobacco industry. And I can yeah. just say this because I've met a lot of the people in that industry, and they're not, you know, they're they're very authentic, down to earth people, and um, they're just trying to make a good product. They're not out there with heavy advertising trying to make an, addict, an addictive product uh, and ignoring the you know the health benefits they're showing the health uh, opposite of benefits I can't think of words today um, <laughs> so just you know when, you, when you're considering all these additives you know when you, when you, when you talk about companies like Cornell and Deal like Lane you know like I know a lot of these guys they're 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 out there they're all pipe smokers too um, they smoke their own product they use their own product they love what they do and so these these additives that we've been talking about, I wouldn't worry about them all that much. Yeah. So that's all I have to say on that. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, two months ago, I don't know. Um, the Country Squire actually did an episode on this, and I like was jumping up and down saying, "Yes, finally!" Like people in the industry are talking about additives that are added to tobaccos. Um, now the great thing about blending yourself is you can add whatever you want. Um, often people will um, add, you know, sugars, honey, rum, those types of things. If you, um, Cornell and Deal, Jeremy Reeves from Cornell and Deal actually um, talked about how they use alcohol, like grain alcohol, as a, um, what's it called? Um, like a delivery. Like a delivery yeah. system where they add the ingredients to that grain alcohol, then they put it on, and then that grain alcohol will evaporate, and you're left with the kind of the ingredients being on mm -hmm. the tobacco. Helps it out uh, on a cellular level to to carry in, just like when you're brining a turkey. Um, yep. It the brine helps it to you know enter into the meat and brings flavor with it, and then when the pa the, sorry the salinity equalizes, the comes out leaving flavor. All right, I've probably added, what, a tablespoon or two? Yeah, I'd say. Um, I'm going to add just a little bit more. Yeah. So. We can blame Scott Busby again for the impre imprecise yeah. and recipe. <laughs> uh, Scott's this wonderful blender. He's very underrated in our community. Mm -hmm. um, but he comes up with these really great ideas and... The thing that I like to tell people, or the thing that I like to highlight with this blend is that it's based off of the Plague Doctor. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and one of those common herbs that they used in their mask was tarragon. 
So there's a yeah. cool kind of homage to that. And a nice little connection to what we're dealing with now, eh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. What I'm about to do, I I can't stand. But it works. And I don't know how it works <laughs> or why it works. And if you're still listening, how long have we been going for? Oh, uh, about 20 minutes or so. Okay. Yeah. Um, the first time I've made this blend, I actually did five pounds. And there I was with a two liter of Dr. Pepper. <laughs> but by God, somehow Scott Busby came up with this casing, um, which is kind of a topping as well because it has flavor to it. Um, and I'm going to put this on this tobacco, and I always feel like a dumbass because um, you, you think that soda yeah. should ruin it. But there is something magical that happens with the tarragon and particularly the perique, mm -hmm. where the fruitiness of the Dr. Pepper, I don't even know, the Dr. Pepperness of it. Yeah, there's like um, 23 flavors in the Dr. Pepper, so. Maybe. I mean, it's what, it's what they say. But it's also adding sugar as well, mm -hmm. which is, um, again, it's a good thing. Now, I would probably spray this, and I'm actually going really, really meager. If you put too much on, there runs a risk where, like, like tea, like you, this, the, the stuff, what is it, infuses out of it, or like what's it called? Yeah, what's that? yeah, and it'll just come out of it and evaporate. Um, but you put a little on. You can always add more, but it's really hard to take away mm -hmm. um, unless you're got the time to just let it sit out. And the other thing too is. Once you're done making a blend, this is a slow process. You can try it right away, um, but you're actually not going to get a good read about what your blend is going to taste like mm -hmm. until you let it sit for a while. Some people say as, as long as two weeks. Some people say six months. Um, mm -hmm. And I really don't have an answer for you, but it's something that you should consider. Sometimes your worst mistakes will become your best friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you can, if you want to accelerate the marrying process, because what's happening is your your tobaccos are kind of exchanging oils and yeah. flavor compounds and moisture with, with the various varietals, and they're becoming, you know, a more unified picture. And um, you can accelerate that sometimes with a, with a mild pressing um, yeah. what I like to do is take two, two by fours, put the tobacco in a plastic bag and then just take some C clamps and put, and get all the air out of the, the, the plastic bag, put the board between, put the tobacco between the two boards, take the C clamps, press it down. And then just every day, crank it down a little bit more. You'll end up with this little like flat tobacco cake. Yep. Um, do that, you know, keep it in there for about a week. I don't know what the... You know the ratio is you know aging equivalent, but it definitely um, definitely changes, uh, accelerates the marrying process. Here you go, Brendan. What do you think? Let's see here. I'll. Uh... Oh yeah. Hmm. I'm getting a lot of latakia on the nose. Yeah. But it's re it's yeah. really well blended. Yeah, but that, that's what that looks like now. So you know, and keep in mind this tobacco is still a little dry because it hasn't had time to absorb yep. that Dr. Pepper. So you, you know, you cover it and let that absorb before you smoke it. Now but, we're gonna we're gonna post this to our uh, our uh, YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Um, comment, react. Um, have you had any? Um, have you had any good results with blending? Um, any tips? Also, we're going to put this on our Facebook page, comment, mm -hmm. uh, interact. And I also, this will be dated after after this year, but um, go into Indian River and try um, the contest blends that have been submitted this year. Uh, mm -hmm. I had already mentioned it before but it, in my last Facebook Live post, but um, 
they are some of the best uh, blend submissions I have I have seen. Mm -hmm. And you can interact with the people um, who who've made them. So yeah. Well, I think that that has about what we have here. Um, you know, this is like we're gonna wait for to smoke this, but maybe what we'll do here, maybe we'll say, well, maybe next week or something like that. I'll make an announcement. We'll get some guys together and we can smoke what we've made today and we can all uh, review it. So if you're interested in joining us, uh, message us and we'll make that happen. Awesome. So thank you, everybody. All right, you guys take care. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a little bit and uh, stay smoky. Thank <laughs> you.